Give him the boot, top of the ropes, put him to sleep, give him the choke, go ready, yo. Best of all time, didn't know. Talking the game, chat with the pros, switching the lanes, clearing my throat, turning it up, start a debate. It's time to go, wrestle with grace, fall in the snow, tie up his skates, never too late. It's gonna blow, in the garage, counting some dough. With the big man and he hosting the show. We going global so fast, never slow. Who is the goat of our ghost? Radio. Welcome, GOAT fans. We are GOAT Radio. This is the greatest of all time podcast show. I'm the big man, and joining me is Nucci. Nucci, there's not many individuals from Van City that, that get to go to Europe and play some high-level soccer. Yeah, it's uh, it's our first uh, football player here we got on, on the podcast, so we're uh, pretty excited about this one, and uh, what a story he's got so far. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so pumped to bring you Canadian, Italian, professional soccer player, Damiano Piccile. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us, brother. We know you're training hard playing, and uh, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Okay, first things first, the GOAT fans know the drill. Nucci, we just got to say what we're wearing. Yeah, I got the first uh, Jordan... Uh, edition of the PSG uh, kit with Verratti on the back. I don't know if you can. Verratti, yeah, yeah. For a midfielder that we got on the on the show today. Awesome. Okay, I'm wearing the black, the gray. Inter Milan number nine. You know who that is, Damiano? Ronaldo, R nine for sure. Lukaku. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Ooh. Lots, lots of controversy with Lukaku right now, but I love my big man growing up. Uh, watching guys like Lukaku, Ibrahimovic. I love that. Uh, you know who I love? Didier Drogba. And uh, right now, Haaland, the 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 horse. Good players. Oh yeah. So bunch Dam- of beasts. Beasts. All right, Damiano. Let's get right into it. Where did your love for the game of soccer begin, man? Well, it started off from a from a young age since I was I started playing when I was like four years old. But I'd say for sure it started out with my dad. Um, yeah, he always always had me with a ball and was always taking me to the field from a really young age. And he was a football player himself, so yeah, he brought me into it for sure. Yeah, and you grew up in Van City. So how were you able to develop into the player you are? Were you going to camps? Were you traveling around to to develop? Yeah, well, as a kid, I was like, um, just loved all sports. Like in school, I did uh, track and field. So I did that. I was playing hockey at a high level. I was um, obviously playing soccer at a high level as well. So, um, yeah, just always, always like training whenever I could. And I give a lot of credit, like I said, to my dad, because it would be like training. I'd have like some days I'd go like hockey, like first thing in the morning, then I'd go to school, then after school, I'd have soccer training. And then after that, we'd go like by ourselves just to the field and just work on some other stuff because he was my coach when I was younger as well. So after the trainings would end, we'd do all, like all the time, like stuff, just me and him. So yeah, I was always training a lot, going to camps, like you said. And yeah, it's a lot of sports. I didn't know you were a hockey guy. Where'd you play minor? I played in, uh, I started out at Burnaby Minor and then uh, I went to BWC. Oh wow! Wow, Nucci, yeah. no, you know just a like bit. you, yeah, yeah. I was more Burnaby Minor, but uh, the, where that legendary Joe Sakic was born. Yeah. Who yeah. did you play uh, your club football with here locally? I played. I started out with Cliff Ave, Cliff Avenue okay. in yeah. Burnaby, because it was like uh, that's where I was from, and my dad was on the board there when I was younger. So yeah, I was playing there. And then you went to AC Milan uh, Academy. At yeah, I went, um, yeah, I went, there was like this little, like this thing called Excel and it was like a Europe trip with like all the, like, like the, the players who were doing well at that time, like the young players, we, we went on like a Europe trip and from there, there was like this one agent or scout guy from Italy 
and he said, um, I don't know, he liked the way I played and stuff like that. So I was like 12 or 13 years old and I went out to Milan for a trial and I also went to Tottenham and I went to uh, mm. Cremonese there in Serie I think they got relegated now, but last season they were in Serie A and uh, yeah, and Milan, being a Milan fan, like since I was young, it was, it was really mm. cool to be there and training with them. And uh, yeah, it was good. I actually made it there, there but... It was uh, it was too complicated. My dad would have had to move out to Italy and leave his job, leave my family, and all that. So because you were like young, home. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, awesome. So, um, growing up, who were your teams and who were the who were your favorite players? Kaka on Milan, and uh, like I said, Milan was my team. So hold those on, are, those are my favorite. Look at that! Unreal, <laughs> unreal. So this is the Goat Raj Damiano. We have. Unlimited jerseys. We have artifacts okay. after the season. I want you to come take a look. For sure. For sure. Because <laughs> we're in the hood. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like you said, you did all that, went to the Milan camp. Um, but you decided to obviously stick around here. Um, and then you got into the White Caps youth system. Um how was it getting into that, um, developing with them? It was probably a kind of a new avenue for for football players in Canada or North America to to develop with the MLS kind of starting to thrive and and developing with their their youth youth systems and youth clubs. Yeah, that was um, it was really good, honestly. When I when I went to the Whitecaps, and even though I'm not part of them anymore, they're the guys who basically made me the player I am today because. That's where I did most of my development at. I was playing in the HPL in in uh, Vancouver there with Mountain United. And I had one coach, uh, Steve Kendall, and also worked with another guy, um, Dasso. Worked with Dasso for a bit, Dasovich, Nick Dasovich. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, those guys, those guys really helped me out, to be honest. Um, but yeah, going into the Whitecaps, it was like a big change for me because they brought me in. I was like a little kid, man, like just shy little kid and... I went in there with all the older guys. Like I got called in like to train with the guys who were two years older at the time. So these guys were already like kind of going through puberty and I was still this like little guy, you know, <laughs> so I was just getting killed like for my first couple of months, like just getting tackled. And obviously they're more physical than me and stuff like that. But I grew a lot, like a lot as a player in that time. Yeah. I mean, putting yourselves with guys, like you said, a year or two older challenges you probably hard at first physically at that age to to keep up or you know keep your head above water but it goes a long way in, in development I think in in all sports if if kids can play with better opposition or train with you know better players or you know someone that you can strive uh, to look up to and stuff that's a probably was a big thing for you to uh, developing yeah yeah for sure um, and then you spent how many years in the Whitecaps? You ended up getting a senior cap there too. Yeah, I was, um, I think I joined the Whitecaps like when I was 14 started, or 15. I started training up with the other guys and then all the way up until I was 17, I was part of the academy system. And then I went, um, when I was 17, I signed my first pro contract. I signed the MLS Homegrown. And that was a big, big moment for me. That was like my uh, my dream come true to become a pro athlete. So that was great. And then uh, stayed there for a season then or half a season. And then COVID came. I was supposed to go like when I signed, I was originally supposed to just be signed and loaned out to Europe like right away. Okay. But then COVID came and kind of messed everything up. So I was I ended up staying with the the first team and training with them. I wasn't getting many opportunities for games and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I just stayed with them for about, like I said, that half season, then COVID came, and then I was with them after COVID for a bit, and then uh, Venezia came in for a loan. And yeah, then, speaking uh, about, yeah. yeah, Venezia, like, walk us how, uh, through how that that happened. I know it was originally a loan, uh, and then it became a permanent uh, transfer. Like, can you talk us through that? How how did that come about? obviously agents involved and the teams and all that um, maybe for our listeners that aren't too aware of how that kind of stuff goes on. They see it in the, on social media and the news and stuff, guys getting transferred, but you know, maybe you can talk us through how that kind of works a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't playing a lot with the first team of Vancouver in the MLS because, I don't know, I was young, I was still developing. So, I, it was really important for me to find somewhere where I was going to play games. And uh, it's always been a dream of mine to play in Europe, let alone Italy being being <laughs> Italian as well. So, yeah. Yeah, when my agent my agent came in with uh, that Venezia was interested, I didn't really have to think twice. I was just like, yeah, for sure, get me over there. So it all went pretty quickly. I was in uh, I was in Utah with the Whitecaps because we had to relocate for COVID. So That's we right. Yeah. For, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember that, but yeah, like, we were living there for like two months, and then yeah, I flew home from Utah, got like a week or two with my family and friends, and then off to Italy I went, and then. Yeah, it was alone at first, and then this summer after the season, they they bought me. So now I'm a Venezia player. Beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, got to be a dream come true as an Italian, Canadian, yeah, yeah. Uh, growing up watching that your whole life, and then all of a sudden you're <laughs> signing with a club that is in the Serie A, and that's uh, unbelievable, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nucci, I know you were saying to me a couple weeks ago, you're like, I don't know, no one that's gone through that route and played uh, for a team like Venezia. It's pretty sick. Yeah, from, from here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like in modern era. Yeah. Can't really think of anyone that's, that's done that and, and, and achieve that. Uh, at, and at that age too. Well, we got a local goat here. Yes. <laughs> um, Damiano. So right now you're at the uh, Finnish premier league with, uh, yeah. K- KTP. Can you yeah. tell us, uh, what led to that that loan, and uh, do you? How does that work? Do you and the clubs? Do you have to agree to it, or is it all decided between the clubs? How does that work? So it was um, when Venezia signed me in the summer. I joined them in preseason, so that was last year summertime. I joined them in preseason and had a good preseason. I was doing well and everything, and then we had uh, the Coppa Italia. We played against Ascoli. And I, I started that game and I played pretty well. I played the full game, even extra time. But then after that, there's like, uh, obviously with these bigger clubs like Venezia and in Europe, they're always going to have big like aspirations or big uh, targets for the years. And uh, yeah, coming from, because when I was there in Venezia, I played the season, like the season when I was on loan, I was playing with the academy team and training with the first team. And I had a really good season with the academy, which is why why they signed me. But they had a bunch of older guys in the midfield. They had like seven or eight midfielders. And they said, listen, like, for now, you're still young. The main thing for you is you need to play a lot of games and get just minutes with men, you know. So that's why they sent me over here to play because it's a, it's a professional league and it's a, a first division in Europe. So there's teams that go to the Champions League here, teams that go to Europa League in this in this league. So... Yeah, they just basically sent me over here just to get games, get minutes, and keep developing. And I said, yeah, for sure, because I'd rather go and play a lot of games and get to see what it's like playing against men and playing pro and getting a feel for it rather that than, I don't know, maybe playing five or six games with Venezia or 10, but some off the bench, like something like that. So, yeah, I agreed to it. And then once again with the with Venezia, they actually had a – a deal with these guys so they told me about it and i was like yeah for sure get me over there do they kind of tell you like hey this is going to be your role when you're here you're going to play a, a ton for us you're going to be kind of the man um is that kind of part of it as well or is it let, let's see what you can do when you get here yeah there's um obviously before going over i had a talk with the sporting director and he let me know kind of what the team was about what the coach wants to see all that kind of stuff and um yeah it's just I wasn't really told I was going to be the man or anything like that. It was just kind of like, listen, like we're more than happy to take you. We like, we like you as a player, just come over here and we'll see how it goes. And so far this season, it's been going really well. I've been playing a lot and uh, getting a lot of minutes under my belt, which is what's really important for me at this stage in my career. I just was injured for a month and a half. I tore my quad, but I just came back this week. So I'll be back this weekend. Nice. Perfect. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Um. So, you played youth international level for Canada, uh, 2019 FIFA U17 World Cup. Um, has there been any discussions at all over the last few years or recently for 
uh, you know, on the radar for a senior team call up or uh, anything like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously playing with Canada, first of all, what a amazing thing that was to do. Wow. That was yeah unbelievable. So uh, that's like, personally, that's my main goal is to get into that men's national team because like, it's just the feeling you get representing your country. It's just, it's like, you can't put it into words, you know? So I want to get back in there for sure, but no, there hasn't been anything that I've heard. I don't think it's like, uh, I don't think they really talk to you about it. They just kind of make that call and call you up. But that's what I strive for. That's what I keep trying to do good every day. I keep training every day hard. And then hopefully in the near future, I'll be up there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you've already been in the in the system at some point there. And you, you got to be on their radar, obviously, now that you're getting the bigger minutes and playing um, against the the big boys and in the in the top leagues over there, it's uh, only a matter of time, I think. Yeah. Let's and hope we, so. And we got 2026 20, around the corner. It'd be nice to see Pichile in red at BC Place. <laughs> Would love that. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, and then, obviously, I mean, it takes us to, to, to present day and, and towards the future. Like, what are some of your goals uh, going forward in soccer? Um, you know, like, you you mentioned some of them, but you know maybe there's some some personal goals, some some teams you maybe want to strive for. I don't know, like what does that kind of stuff look like uh, on your end? Yeah, my um, personally, my main goal would be to get obviously in the short term. My main goal would be to get on that World Cup roster, like you guys said, in 26. I think these next couple of years are going to be really important for me. I I have to like. Cause it's like, this has been my first proper season playing game in game out in a professional league. So I think over these next couple of years, just building on, building on this season, starting to get some stats, starting to uh, just get some attention on my name so I can get into that roster. But yeah, not only that, but just main goal is just to represent Canada at the men's level, just get back with the national team. But other than that, honestly, just uh, Milan has been my, my dream club since a kid. So if they ever come calling, I don't know, maybe if Saudi comes with hundred million a year or Milan comes, <laughs> I think I go to Milan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But like, crazy. Yeah, just getting with the national team and hopefully one day play for Milan. Perfect. Yeah. Unreal, man. Awesome. Uh, Damiano, any uh, last question here? Any you want to do any shout outs to any family back here in Van City? Shout out to my uh, mom and dad, my sister, awesome. everyone close to me, grandparents, cousins, everyone. I miss you guys. That's all. Awesome. I know they're proud of you. All right, brother. Thanks for that. We're going to do a fun part of the pod, some goat rapid fire. All right. Okay. So Sounds you're going good. to, you're going to give us your answer. You can expand if you want to, or you can say next question. Okay. All right, let's go. What's your nickname? Petchy. Petchy. Alexander Ovechkin or Sidney Crosby? Crosby. King James or Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi, easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially last couple of days ago. Just, I don't know yeah. if that was rigged or what. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that was crazy. Pretty nuts what he did with uh, debut Inter Miami there. Yeah. Holland or Mbappe? Mbappe. Ooh. Why is that? One little reason why. I just think he's more of like a all-around player, more talented. I think Mbappe is I or sorry, Holland is a better goal scorer, but I think okay. Mbappe is all around. And that money talks kind of crazy right now with the Saudi billion yeah. dollar deal yeah. like yeah. i don't know how you say no to that for just a year yeah no you can't you can't <laughs> totti or del piero totti yes <laughs> maldini or sergio ramos maldini easy oh i don't know about that i'm a milan fan i know oh. you are <laughs> but you know what international championships that's 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 a big scar for maldini but obviously he's regarded as one of the best 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Who's the GOAT player you played with or against? Alfonso Davies. Ooh, nutty. John Cena or The Undertaker? Um, <laughs> the Undertaker. Absolutely. Yeah. Who would you have as your bodyguard? John Jones or Francis Nuganu? John Jones. John Bones Jones. Okay, fitness testing. What's your best okay. test and your worst test? Um, do you guys one. do you guys do some fitness testing? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably my my best one's probably agility. Nice. So like uh, like weaving through cones and stuff like that. And yeah. my worst one. No, my worst one. Well, you maybe uh. Maybe like the beep test or yo-yo test. I don't know if you guys know what that Oof. is, but yeah, I hate the I beep hate test. Yeah, <laughs> Nucci, you like the beep, beep test? Yeah, I heard. I you. hate it, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ideal formation for your style of play. Um, probably a four-three-three, three, where I get like some freedom to just roam around the midfield. Like that's what I had last year with Venezia. So, yeah, it's good. I'm not sure if you're superstitious, but what's your weirdest pregame ritual? I don't have a pregame ritual, but I always uh, I always pray before a game and every night because I was raised in uh, I went to St. Helens in Burnaby. Yeah. So raised as a Catholic, so I just keep that with me today. Awesome, brother. Pregame meal. Uh, usually pasta or chicken with rice. Pizzel or cannoli? Cannoli. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to do besides soccer? Hang out with friends. Okay. This is just a topic we had a few months ago, so I don't want to throw you under the bus, but blondes or brunettes? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, blondes. Blondes? Probably blondes, Good one. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where are the best beaches in europe well i was just in greece about a week and a half ago so i have to say greece because that was unbelievable nice okay would you rather play one world cup game or play in the champions league final uh I'm getting technical with you guys here because if I was playing the Champions League final, I'm bound to play in the World Cup as well. So <laughs> I'll be Champions League final and I get the best of both worlds. Good answer. <laughs> Great answer. Okay. You've been in the FIFA World Cup uh, PlayStation. I'm not a video game guy, but you're in the FIFA video games. Yeah. So um, I guess you were in the last two, two uh, editions, 22 and 23 of FIFA. You have a rating of 59. Are you happy with that? Of course not. Nice. Well, you, flip that around. But I can I can see I can see why it would be at that. I haven't really proved myself enough with pros yet. So Awesome. Do you play it? Yeah, the, I played like all my life. I just stopped playing about a year ago, I would say. So for me it was really cool to be in the game at first, but now it's like Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's now just that cool for my now little, that you're my in the game, cousin. you don't have to play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My little cousins play it a lot, so they always break to their friends how their cousins in the game. So that's a cool, <laughs> that's cool for me. Yeah, that's so cool to celebrate with yourself yeah. and stuff. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Last question: Who's your best follow on Instagram? Probably Alfonso Davies. Nice. All right, I'm gonna try. We're gonna try to get him on uh, radio. <laughs> <laughs> all right good luck, good luck. Damiano <laughs> to end the pod we toast to the goat for this I got some grappa okay okay Strong. Nucci what do you got there I just got a little espresso going here you got a spro all right I got some water for you guys so I'll join <laughs> you beautiful um all right Damiano you are a real gifted midfielder and you Thank have you. A, such a bright future ahead of you. And Goat Radio is pumped for you. And we'll continue to follow your, your journey, man. So this one's for you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, yeah. 
10 a.m. Grappa, clean the pipes out. <laughs> Love it. Beautiful. Awesome, brother. Okay, uh, one more thing. When's your next game? Is it this weekend? It's, yeah, it's this Sunday. And you're in? Yeah, I'm back available. Man, wish you all the best. Thank you so much for doing this, man. And we'll touch base this year. And we can't wait to get you in the goal rush. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Eh? Thanks for having me. Beautiful. Right. Thank you. Forza KTP. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Nucci, thanks. This is the greatest of all time podcast show, Goat Radio. We will see you next time for more Goat History. We'll see you later. Petchy, see you. See you. Ciao. Okay. Radio. Best of all time, that's a ratio. Dino tune on, welcome to the show. Yeah. I don't let them know. G-O-A-T-Y. G-O-A-T-Y.